It's a what? It's a swing wing. It's a wing wing. A brand new trance of grand fun thing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. A fun thing. And now it's your favorite store thing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. A fun thing. And every pop got it. Get Swing Wing, made by Transigram, where the fun comes from. It's a Swing Wing. It's a what? While we're waiting for the uh, capacitors to come in, so I can restuff that other can, I might as well go ahead and hook up the wires coming out of the one I've already restuffed, the larger of the two. I have a couple of 10s right here, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors are the two yellow ones. And the ground is this black one, of course, and the green one is the 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor that are up in that can. So it's just a matter of taking the schematic and tracing them out to see where they go and then utilize your multimeter to ohm between that item and the contacts that are currently existing on the uh, bottom of the electrolytic cap uh, capacitor connectors that were originally there. That's why I like to do it this way. I don't disturb the original uh, connections on the bottom of the uh, capacitor. Some people will unsolder everything and then put them back in and say, oh God, what wire went where? And then I got to go through this long drawn out procedure making sure that I get this hooked up, that hooked up. There's always resistors and capacitors that, that have to be hooked up, additional capacitors maybe. You never know. So I like doing it this way, you know, uh, leaving them on. I already know, we already know that this uh, 100 microfarad, let me see if I can get it in there where you can see it's kind of hard here, I know. This 100 microfarad capacitor, this uh, one from the center, is the one that goes over and connects to the choke. So that pin will be that one right there. Let me see, get this crap out of your way. That one right there is where that 100 microfarad goes. I'll take it and just bend it on over there and solder it down just like that. I'll have to do a little trimming, of course, to get it to fit right. And then I've already ohmed out the two tens. The two tens, that one gets soldered on this connection right here on top, and the other one will go down here underneath. You can't hardly see it. It's underneath this uh, thing right here, but it's, it's down in there. Be, it, the second one goes there. So all that leaves me right now is I'm going to have to figure out by looking at the schematic where the green one goes. Now once again before I get ready to solder I've got to clean all that nasty flux off of all of those contacts before I even apply the wire to it in order to solder it. And sometimes you got to take a little bit of a something and knock off some of that goofy stuff hangs on there like epoxy glue sometimes. Get it as clean as you can before you do your soldering, okay? And of course when we're done we're going to clean it again. Figured I'd let you uh, see me ohm out the last wire here which is connected inside that can to a 20 microfarad capacitor. Now I'm pretty sure it goes on that pin right there since that's the only pin that's left. It does not have uh, a capacitor wire connected to it that I installed in that can. I have the yellow one here and another one here and then the, of course the 100 microfarad is over there. But we still have this one left which is the 20 microfarad. Now according to the schematic it's connected uh, into the uh, 6A5 audio output tube. It is uh, C3D. That is C3D, the 20 microfarad capacitor. And the way this thing works is it comes off, let's see if I can get this down here where you can see it. I don't think you can see it very well anyway. It comes off pin 2 and goes through a 330 ohm resistor, which is orange, orange, brown. And then the other side of that resistor connects to C3D, the positive side of the C3D, which I believe to be this pin 
right here. So what we need to do is find that 330 ohm resistor connected uh, to pin 2 of the 6AG5. Alright, here's our 6AG5 right here. Now pin 2, uh, there's a space here. The, the pins go all the way around and there's a space which, which would be the key. So we go to pin 1, pin 2. Well there's our 300 and 30 ohm resistor, orange, orange, brown, right there. Now according to the schematic, it goes through that resistor and then connects, the other side of that resistor connects to the positive side of the 20 microfarad capacitor C3D. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and hook, we're going to go ahead and hook a gator wire right there, and we'll hook the gator wire to the black on the multimeter. Now, if I get a reading on the meter, which is something other than it telling me it has a low battery, <laughs> I left it on the other night, dumb. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is, uh, remember I told you I thought this was the connection right here, where I want to solder this. Uh, and if I get a reading when I touch it, that means I'm good to go. Let's find out touch. Look at there. There it is right there. We do in fact have continuity from this side of the resistor back to the capacitor can. There it is again. That tells me all I have to do is hook this green wire, loop it around, put a hook in the end, trim it off a little bit of course, and solder it right there. And that'll be good. The entire can will be connected. And there we have it. The caps I put in this can are now all connected to the bottom where they're supposed to be. We're in good shape right now. Let's push that a little closer to the bottom of the chassis, I think. All right. Now all we have to do is wait for the caps to come in on the second can. I thought I'd go ahead and wrap up this video by answering a question that was posted on part 11 of this series by... YouTube user the Mr. 6507. The Mr. 6507. And it's in response to what I said right here. Now, the old radio uh, filter cans, the large ones, some of them had uh, liquid in them. Be careful cutting those open. Uh, that liquid is boric acid. It won't hurt you any. But you know, you don't want to be getting it into your eyes opening it up with a Dremel tool, you know, like I just opened up these two cans. Because that stuff will spray everywhere once the tool breaks through the can. Okay, his question was, we'll go down here, his question was, is there a way to tell if a cap has either the wax or the acid inside? Yes, there is. Uh, you have to shake it. You have to take it out and shake it or just cut it. Now, most of the old radio caps that had the liquid in them, they looked like this. Now, I did a restoration on an Atwater Kent 856 uh, way back uh, in the antique radio form. I was back in, uh, what year did I do this? Back in, uh, I don't even know, hang on. It was done back in 2009. I did a complete restoration cabinet and chassis. It was the first one I ever did. And here is the capacitor cans I took out of that Atwater Kent 856. It was two of them. And uh, after cleaning them all up, and they look pretty much look like this. Your liquid-filled caps will be large. They'll be found mostly in the middle 1930s uh, vintage tube radios. You won't, I don't think you'll find any in a television set. But in the old tube radios from the 1930s, there were lots of them there. Uh, around 1935, 36, probably up to around 38. As far as I know, there may have been more, but I don't think so. Anyway... After I clean them all up and cut them open, uh, what's wrong with this thing? Come on, baby. Now, don't don't lock up on me now here. Oh, shucks. This thing is, okay, here we go. All right. They're pretty good size. They're about, oh, maybe big around is a half a dollar and maybe uh, three and a quarter to four inches long. There they are in my hand. Kind of gives you an idea of the size. And all you can do is shake them. You'll hear the liquid inside if the liquid is still there. I was lucky that these two had quite a bit of liquid in them after I cut them open. 
there's one I cut open and then the other one here and I just cut them open with the Dremel tool just like I showed you how to do it uh, in the uh, the TV uh, series I, I'm doing and there is the boric acid that came out of those two cans quite a bit and uh, like I said you can usually it'll be the kind of can that has the single connector on the bottom like that let me give you a little closer look here that's what it looks like right there there's usually one capacitor in each of those cans and what's inside is kind of interesting I showed all of this on this restoration of that Atwater Kent 856. If you ever want to look at it, you know, just type in in the Google, uh, type in uh, Atwater Kent 856 step by step, and that'll get you to the thread and the antique radio form. And uh, this is after I cut the tops off. This is there's a screen in there in each one, and after you remove the screen you have a folded up looks like a couple of aluminum looks like an aluminum fan that's been collapsed in each one now one of these is a little bit shorter than the other you'll notice these uh, screens are made out of a fiber material kind of almost like a oh I don't know almost like plastic actually they're not metal these these are aluminum but these are not and then I've, I've splayed out the aluminum I was showing folks what's inside them when I did this restoration. A lot of guys like seeing that. But this is all what forms the capacitance with boric acid. I don't know how they came up with this idea. And after I removed those fan-like uh, th uh, things inside there, this is what it looks like down through the bottom. You've got rubber insulators. And this is how I eventually restuffed them. I used those long rods, these two long rods right here, this one. And this one, I used, I removed everything I could and, and took out a couple of these rivets to use as screws, uh, screw and nut points, you'll see right here and right here. And then I went ahead and mounted the new capacitor in it. And uh, put everything back together with the tape and remounted them back in the cardboard tube. Drilled a hole just like I did in the one on the TV chassis and brought the lead out and soldered the leads where they needed to go and the grounding lead and all that jazz. And When I got done, this is what I had. One, and there's the tape I used to put it back together. And the other one, of course, you can't see the tape because it's inside this insulated sleeve. So that's it, folks. That's what the ones with the liquid in normally look like. That right there and that right there. And with that... We'll go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope that answers uh, Mr. Uh, the Mr. 6507's question about which one, which one of these have the uh, the liquids in them. Usually found in the radios. Sorry it took me so long to answer that. I meant to do that, and it, it just slipped my mind. Until next time, this is John.